higher. Speaking of the New Orleans Saints, um, Saints Falcons, part two this Sunday. I'm very excited. First off, shout out to the man, Cam Jordan, 21 sacks and 19 career games against the Falcons, added three to that total last game. Can he add even more this game? That question will be critical, and I'll explain why. Uh, eight sacks for the Saints defense as a whole last time, just in case you've forgotten, which I'm sure you have because it was fantastic. Demario Davis had one. Cam had three. Anya Mata got himself two. Trey Hendrickson got himself two. It was an incredible game. If that Saints defensive line plays half as good, I think the Saints win the game again. Where I would be worried if I was a Falcons fan is that I think the Saints defense is even better now than it was two weeks ago with the continued rise of Quan Alexander. Like, literally, the Saints' one thing that could have been perceived as a weakness, which I think was Alex Anzalone in that position, now looks like a strength. As I said earlier, with Devin White struggling against the pass recently, my old man, me and him were talking on the phone yesterday, and I got to give him credit. He was like, I think you can make the argument that Quan Alexander and Demario Davis are the best linebacker tandem in the NFC South. I mean, Levante David and Devin White are very good, but they're not as, especially now Devin White is not as complete of a player right now as these two are. Plus, last game, you didn't have Marshawn Lattimore against the Falcons. He returns. Maybe Jackrabbit being back or not makes that kind of a wash. But again, given the Saints front office, their secondary depth is such that it hasn't really mattered. You still have P. Rob, you still have P.J. Williams, C.J. Gardner Johnson continues to make plays week in and week out. Um, so the defense, if it's half as good, they win that game again. But it's not to say that they can just roll the ball out and play because the defense is going to be critical. Why? Because of what the Saints are limited to and or can do offensively right now. And make no mistake, for as bad as you want to talk about Taysom Hill, quarterback of the future, can he throw the ball to a level that you feel comfortable with him being that quarterback to the future? Uh, for all of that talk, I just think it, it, it misses the point this year, right? The, the point, like Peyton said on Sunday this year, it's not about aesthetics. It's not about proving what Taysom Hill can or can't do. It is simply about winning the game. And the core fundamental blue-collar truth of this New Orleans Saints team is that when Taysom Hill is at quarterback, the separating factor between you and the rest of the NFL is the rushing attack. And it's not hard to see why. Look at Alvin Kamara, look at Latavius Murray, and then look at Taysom Hill, who all, interestingly, last game against the Falcons, where the Falcons rushed for like 50 yards on like two yards of carry, and the Saints rushed for 160 on over four yards of carry. Last game out against Atlanta, Hill had 50 yards, Kamara had 50 yards, and Latavius Murray had 50 yards. So you have a three-headed beast there that isn't just impressive because they can keep each other fresh and they can spread out those carries, but you have a three-headed beast that's impressive because it attacks you in three different ways from three different directions with three different skill sets. Right, Kamara is your do-it-all back. Now, granted, he, he really is the do-it-all guy, right? Like, I have no problem running Kamara up the middle, but obviously you think on the flanks, that's where he is at his best. Put that speed on the edge. Get him in space. He is one of the hardest-to-tackle players in the entirety of the NFL. And then, obviously, his receiving acumen brings a whole other threat the defense has to approach. So he's going to weaken the def def defensive flanks because he's going to force you to pay attention to the edges. And then, lo and behold, who comes right up the middle? How tall is Latavius Murray? Like 6'4"? I mean, the dude is lineman size. He is a giant. I want to say he's like 6'4", 230, or 220 or something. Well, he's the punch up the middle. 6'3", 230. Yeah, there you go. I mean, just a massive individual. So Kamara's stressing you on the flanks. Latavius Murray, Danny, you called it. You wanted a Latavius Murray game. You've gotten a couple here recently. Why? Because the rushing attack is the strength right now. And so Kamara weakens you on the edges. Murray gets you up the middle. I still go back to the Detroit game where Murray had two touchdowns on some excellent red zone possessions where on third and goal you used Kamara as a huge decoy, only they give him the ball then to Latavius Murray. So obviously, and that was a breeze, that was already a powerful one-two punch, especially in the red zone. So then what happens when you throw the quarterback into the mix? And all of a sudden you have a quarterback who is actually the fastest guy on your team. You have a quarterback who's running like a 4-3 at like 240 or whatever he is. And for those that know about like football theory, right, the, the, the biggest advantage that you have when you run a quarterback is that you gain a blocker. 
Think about a quarterback on a normal rushing play. They hand the ball off and they stand there. That you have it's eleven on eleven. That's a wasted man at that point. So all of a sudden, when you have Taysom Hill and he is the running threat, well, then you're gaining that man back, meaning from a scheme and playbook standpoint, it opens everything up. Why does Sean Payton love Taysom Hill so much on third down? For that reason. And so that's just looking at Hill as a pure runner, not even taking his arm into account, but you don't even need to take his arm into account because that's where his value comes from. So if you're a defense, how do you defend against that? I just don't know that you can, at least not for four quarters. And that's why I say that the defense can't just roll the ball out is because there are paths to the Saints losing to this game, and one of them would be falling behind early. I don't know that I have seen enough from Taysom Hill to say that I feel comfortable with him being able to throw your way into a comeback or throw your way to victory. In fact, Moose, I don't, you're shaking your head back there. I don't think you want to see him throw at all. I know. I <laughs> keep running him. If it were, I mean, so, but that's the, that's the danger though, right? Cause you never, you, you yeah. could get forced into having to throw. Yeah. If it, and you know what? Maybe he'll rise to the occasion. I'm not saying he can or can't. We're talking about best path to victory. And if you look at Atlanta, New Orleans game one, while well, it was a, Final score that was separated by quite a bit. Remember, a lot of that game was the offense kind of figuring itself out as the defense allowed them to because the defense just held the Falcons completely in check. So you got to look for something similar there. And if the defense can do that, you don't have to be as down in the last game, but if you can hold them in check and avoid Taysom Hill to have to throw the ball, eventually, I don't care how good you play him early on, the Saints rushing attack right now is like Derrick Henry just spread out among three different players. Eventually, they will lean on you. They will break through. So it starts defensively. Their excellent rush defense, putting the Falcons in third and long, creating sack opportunities and getting the Falcons back off the field, not allowing them to force the Saints to pass. And then if you can do that, watch out. Because the Saints' offensive rushing attack right now with Taysom Hill is one of the best, if not the best, in the entire NFL and is getting better week to week. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, Go ahead and like and subscribe below. You want more great Saints content? We got it all here on Off the Bench Overtime. Check out these other videos. Share with your friends. And let's grow the Hoodat Nation together. Hoodat!